the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you husky! Gold! Gold! Discovered in the Yukon! A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was stationed temporarily in the town of Moose Crossing during the spring of 1899. The rivers and creeks had shed their heavy coats of ice and tumbled merrily over the rocks. A bright moon lighted up the forest around the cabin where the Mountie sat alone with his big dog, King, beside him. Suddenly, King raised his head and a whine sounded deep in his throat. Sergeant Preston put down the book he was reading and turned toward him. What's the matter, fella? Here's something. What do you want, boy? Why are you pawing at my arm? Oh, quiet, King. I hear it, too. Well, it's only a wolf, a husky baying at the moon. That's not bothering you, is it, fella? All right, boy. I'll let you out. Go on out, King. Hmm. The Mountie yawned and lay down on his cot. He had had a strenuous day, and in a few minutes he had fallen into a sound, dreamless sleep. When next he awakened, the early light of dawn came through the small window of the cabin, paling the light of the lantern on the table. Lamonte sat up quickly. King! King! Oh, now I remember. He must be outside. Funny he didn't bark to come in. Sergeant Preston opened the cabin door and was about to call King, King. when he checked himself suddenly. King stood at the edge of the clearing, and beside him was a beautiful gray animal almost as large as he. It faded back into the woods like a gray ghost at the sound of the door opening, and the Monty couldn't tell whether it was a dog or a wolf. King started back into the woods and then turned back to the cabin as he heard Preston's voice. King, come here, boy. Come on. Well, old fellow, so that's why you didn't bark to come in last night. From the safety of the deep underbrush in the forest, Two eyes peered at the Monty and King. The animal was a silvery gray, half wolf and half dog, and a whine of fear stirred in her throat as she saw the man and King approach each other. At the sound of the man's voice, a strange loneliness tugged at her heart, but her wolf blood kept her rooted to the spot, ready to run from the scent she had been taught to fear. And then King came toward her with his master following, like a gray shadow, she sprang from the protecting thicket and raced into the shelter of the deep forest. There she goes, King. I just saw the silver tip of her tail. Well, old boy, it's up to you to bring her back. Maybe together we can teach her not to be afraid of humans. It took time, patience, and courage to tame Silver Tip, as Sergeant Preston named her. But with the help of King, he finally succeeded. And it was three weeks later that he led her on leash to Randy McNeil, a dog breeder with the finest kennels in the North Country. Silvertip was frightened and bewildered as she was put into the runway. And only the protecting presence of King kept her from trying to gnaw the wire netting to get back to the wilderness she loved. Randy McNeil gasped with admiration. Uh, Sergeant, that's the finest pair of animals I ever saw. King did a good job of selecting a mate. I couldn't have done better for him if I'd picked her out myself. She's got a lot of timber wolf blood. That accounts for her size. But those eyes aren't wolf. They're dog's eyes if I ever saw any. She's part dog, all right, Randy. That's why I was able to tame her. <laughs> well, I wouldn't exactly call her tame. She'll let you handle it, but I couldn't go near with a ten-foot pole. She doesn't trust anybody else. She'll get over that after she's been here a while. Surroundings are strange. She'll have to be handled carefully. Young Jim Stevens takes care of my dogs for me. Huh? He uh, has quite a way with animals. Well, doesn't your son Tom help you? Well, Tom's pretty lazy, I'm afraid, and dogs don't seem to like him very well. I guess it's because he doesn't like them. Anyway, 
Tom doesn't need the money, and Jim Stevens does. Jim and his mother have been having a hard time of it since his father died. Jim's a nice boy. Oh, here he comes now. Hello, Jim. Good morning, Mr. McNeil. Hello there, Sergeant Preston. How are you, Jim? Fine, thanks. Take a look in that front way, Jim. Why, it's King. Is that a dog or a wolf? <laughs> She's a little of both. Isn't she a beauty? You bet. We expect a fine litter of pups from that combination. Keep an eye on her, Jim. She's valuable property. I'm a... I'm going to put her in your hands completely. Well, it's quite a responsibility. Those pups will be worth a lot of money. I think you can handle it all right, Jim. I'll leave King here with her for a day or two. It'll help with Silvertip. If it hadn't been for King, I could never have gotten near her. I'll do my best, Sergeant. Well, you better start right now, Jim. Go get some food and feed her. Young Jim Stevens was patient and kind with Silvertip and soon won her confidence. The men in town marveled at their relationship as she refused to make friends with anyone else. A few trappers were discussing the subject at the trading post one day when Tom McNeil, Ramsey's son, entered. Yes, Jim certainly has a way with dogs. It's a marvel the way Silvertip lets him come right into her kennel. Annie McNeil is lucky to have Jim around. I wouldn't want to fool with her. She's as wild as any full-grown wolf you could find. Hello, boys. Oh, oh howdy, howdy, howdy. We were just talking about that female wolf Sergeant Preston is keeping at your dad's kennels. Yeah, I heard you. She's an ugly beast if ever I saw one. Well, Jim Stevens doesn't seem to have much trouble with her. <laughs> Jim skips on the subject of dogs. As far as I can see, it's about the only thing he knows. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, Jim's a right smart boy. Your dad's lucky to have him around. I mean, I suppose that he's not too lucky to have me. Oh, I didn't say that. Well, that's what you meant. Just because I don't happen to like fooling around with a lot of mangy curs, you seem to think you have the right to criticize. Nobody's criticizing you. You're just putting words into people's mouths. I can tell by the way everybody acts what you're thinking. Well, just because I happen to have more money than most of you and don't have to work, that doesn't mean I'm not as smart as Jim Stevens. Why, Tom, you sound as if you're a little jealous of jealous. Jim. Jealous? Jealous of him? <laughs> That's good. Jealous. <laughs> but Tom McNeil was jealous of Jim Stevens. He had hated him from the first time they had met, and he had secretly envied Jim's strength and courage. There was one way that Tom could antagonize him, and that was through the dogs that Jim loved. It was several days later that Jim discovered him teasing Silvertip. With a long dog whip, Tom flicked at her over the wire fence as Silvertip snarled in helpless rage. I'll show you, you dirty wolf. Snarl at me, will you? <laughs> That'll teach you. Put down that whip. Oh. So here comes the nursemaid. You can't order me around. You hit that dog again and I'll wrap that whip right around your neck. These kennels belong to my father, not you. I can do as I please around that here. That dog belongs to Sergeant Preston. He's boarding her here, and I'm taking care of her. If I told your father what you were doing, he'd whip you himself. Is that so? Well, I'll tell him what I was doing. Using a whip on a fresh upstart that won't mind his own business. <coughs> oh, well, you dirty little... Come down off that fence. <coughs> Let go of me. I'll teach you to use a whip on that dog or me. <coughs> Get away from me. You... Drop that whip. You're hurting my arm. Drop it. <coughs> now... You want to fight, fight with your fist. Let go of me. I'll show you. Oh, why, you... Oh, oh, oh. Get up. Get up and take your medicine. You keep away from me. I'm going to report this to my father. You keep away from those kennels after this. I'm warning you. The next time I catch you teasing this dog, I'll skin you alive. Now, get out of here. Fast. You dirty bully. You'll be sorry for this. You better go into the house and put some raw meat on that eye. It's going to swell. It was later in the day that Randy McNeil entered the house and found Tom sitting alone, his right eye almost swollen shut. Hey, Tom, what's wrong with your eye? What does it look like? You have been fighting? I suppose Jim told you all about that. Jim? Well, no, I just left him. He didn't say anything about it. Who did it? <laughs> just as a good reason he didn't say anything about it. He was the one who hit me. Well, tell me what happened. He's getting too big for his boots. Thinks he owns these kennels of yours. Taking care of that wolf that Sergeant Preston left here is sure going to his head. He's done a fine job with Silvertip. Not many people could have handled him. Sergeant Preston better watch out. 
Jim seems to think that dog is his private property. I wouldn't trust him with it. Hey, Tom, that's ridiculous. Uh, you're always bragging about him and sticking up for him. Guess I should have known better than to say anything to you. That's not true, son. I like Jim, yes. But I don't want to be unfair. And then you better listen to me and keep an eye on him. He's nothing but a sneak. Those pups that Silvertip is going to have are going to be worth a lot of money. There's a reason that Jim is getting so friendly with that dog. I don't know what you're driving at, Tom. All I say is keep your eye on Jim. Remember, he needs money, and those pups will bring a fancy price. That's why he ordered me to stay away from the kennels. He doesn't want anybody watching him. Well, he hasn't any right to do that. I'll, I'll speak to him about it. Oh, he'll think up some fancy lie to tell you, I suppose. Maybe someday you'll find out what he's really like. Jim Stevens was very fond of Randy McNeil and knew the old man would be hurt if he knew the truth about his son, Tom. So he was rather evasive when Randy questioned him about the fight they had had. It was just a flare-up, Mr. McNeil. I guess I lost my temper. Well, it's not like you, Jim. From what I've seen of you, I didn't know you had a bad temper. I, I wish you'd tell me what happened. Well, it was just that Tom doesn't like Silvertip very well, and he said some things that got me kind of mad, I guess. What did he say? Oh, nothing much. I, I guess I was feeling a little edgy or something. I know Tom isn't too reliable, Jim. He's hot-headed and quick-tempered. I guess he just resented it when you told him to keep away from the kennels. I suppose I had no right to do that. They belong to you, and he's your son. Well, that's right, but you're in charge of them. If Tom ever does anything he shouldn't around here, it's your job to report it to me. I'd uh, rather you didn't fight it out between you. Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll forget about it now. And let's not let anything like this happen again, eh? I'm sure it won't, sir. Wait. Hey, Sergeant Preston. Hello there, Sergeant. Hello, 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 hello Randy. Hello, Philip. <laughs> how are you, Jim? Hello, Sergeant Preston. Thought I'd drop around and see how Silvertip's getting along. Oh, she's fine. Come on over and look at her. Yes. All right. You uh, going to be here long, Sergeant? Well, I've been transferred back here to Dawson, Randy. My assignment at Moose Crossing's over with. Well, that's good news. We'll be seeing more of you now, I hope. Oh, I'll still be going out on patrols, but I'll be back here periodically. <laughs> there, Silvertip. King's glad to see her. Want to go on the runway, fella? There. Gates open. Go ahead, boy. <laughs> well, those pups will be here in a few days. I have to be careful of her. Silvertip keeps trying to get out. She started to dig under the fence the day before yesterday. Silvertip wants to have her pups out in the woods someplace, I suppose. She's part wolf, and she'd like to find a nice cave somewhere for her pups. Gee, that, that looks like a scar or a scratch on her head. You uh, haven't used a whip on her, have you, Jim? I should say not. I've never whipped her. She may have done that when she tried to dig out under the fence. <laughs> Those <laughs> dogs are glad to see each other. Do you think you'll be around here when the pups are born, Sergeant? Why, I hope I am, Randy. I have to take a trip south tomorrow, but I'll be back in a week. I certainly want to be here for the big event. Three days had passed, and Sergeant Preston with King had left town on a patrol to the south. The late spring days were long, and only a few hours of darkness covered the Northland each night. Silvertip paced restlessly in her runway. Her instinct told her to find a place in the woods for her coming family, a quiet place where no human eye could watch her and no human hand could take away her young. Every night she took advantage of the few hours of darkness to seek a means of escape. Suddenly, she stopped and sniffed the air as her sharp ears caught a sound in the shadows. Then the fur on her back rose as she recognized the scent of Tom, whom she hated. She backed away from the fence with a snarl. There you are, you dirty woman. Quit snapping. I'd like to give you a taste of this whip. Trying to get out as usual, huh? Well, this time you're going to get your wish. Here goes the gate. Get out. Get out, I say. Keep going. Don't come near me or you'll get a taste of this whip. There she goes. I hope that's the last of her. Now, Jim, 
Maybe you're not going to be the fair-haired boy anymore. You're going to have a hard time explaining this. Silvertip traveled through the forest with a mile-eating lope that soon put a great distance between her and the kennels. She paused at intervals to rest and to drink from the running streams. But dawn found her still on her way, seeking a place of safety. That morning, there was a great deal of excitement at Randy McNeil's. I can't see how Jim could have been so careless. The gate was wide open. I wonder if he was just careless. What do you mean? I told you somebody should have watched him. I doubt that he did leave that gate open accidentally. But Jim wouldn't want Silvertip to run away. Maybe she didn't run away. He may not want you to think so. You mean he... He probably has her hidden somewhere. If she has her pups, he'll sell them secretly and nobody will ever find out. He can make a lot of money. Oh, Tom, that's silly. I know Jim is honest. He sure has fooled you. Of course, leaving the gate unlatched was very careless. I'll say it was. Here he comes now. Hope you're not too easy on him. Good morning. Hello, Jim. Why is this gate open? Where's Silvertip? Maybe you can answer that better than we can. Tom. What do you mean? I'm afraid you were a little careless last night, Jim. I I found this gate open this morning. Silvertip is gone. The gate open? Silvertip gone? But that gate was shut tight when I left last night. I remember shutting it. I fed her, and I know I shut the gate when I went out. Well, it looks as if you didn't shut it tight enough. You... You should have made sure. But I did. I remember. You don't remember opening it again later, do you? Just what are you trying to say? Maybe you know where the dog is and just aren't telling. Why, you... How easy, Jim. Stop it. That'll do, Tom. I don't want any fighting around here. I'm sorry, sir, but he hasn't any business saying I'm a thief. Well, he didn't mean that, Jim. I don't see how I can ever face Sergeant Preston. Those pups were going to be worth a lot of money. They sure will be. Tom! I'm sorry, Mr. McNeil, but I'm not going to work here anymore. Jim, this doesn't mean that I think I'm going to try and find Silvertip. I must find her. There's no way you can, Jim. If it was wintertime, you could track her. But there isn't a sign of her tracks on this dry ground. If Sergeant Preston were here, King could trail her. Preston won't be back for about four days. By that time, her trail will be cold. If anybody planned to steal her, he'd have all that figured out. I don't want you to quit, Jim. Everybody gets careless once in a while. I, I won't hold it against you. No. I don't want to work here anymore anyway. Your son and I just don't seem to get along. I promised Jewel to Merle that I'd go into partnership with him after Silver Tip's pups were born. I'll be able to do it right away, I guess. Jules is a trapper, isn't he? Yes, we're going to put out a trap line north of here. Of course, I'll wait until Sergeant Preston gets back. I don't envy you when he does. If I were you, I'd start for those trap lines right away. I usually face things, Tom, and tell the truth about them. I think even you would find that it paid. No, Mr. McNeil, I'll stay and see Sergeant Preston. He'll be here in a few days. Sergeant Preston looked grave as he talked to Randy McNeil after his return to Dawson City. Of course, I'm very disappointed, Randy. I did want those pups. But I'm not blaming you. Have you talked to Jim? Why, yes. Jim came to see me as soon as I got back. I feel sorry for the boy, but I can't help but think he was pretty careless. I'm sure that's all there was to it. What do you mean? What else could you think? Well, Tom seemed a little suspicious of me. It uh, kind of made me wonder. Suspicious of Jim? Why? Well, we all knew how much Jim likes Silvertip. Huh? He's poor, needs money. If he could have taken her somewhere and hidden her... If you mean that Jim was trying to steal those pups, Randy, you're wrong. I know Jim better than that. That's the way I feel about him, too. But Tom claims we only know the nice side of him. He... He's got a bad temper, it seems. Tom has never liked Jim. Uh, they never got along together. That's why Jim is going away. He won't work here anymore. Yes, he said he was going north to trap with Jules de Merle. I'm sorry to lose him. He was a big help to me. You can't blame the boy for not wanting to work here. He feels that you blame him for losing Silvertip. Oh, if only I'd been here, King could have trailed her. Couldn't you, boy? <laughs> If we knew which direction he took, he might be able to find her. He might run across a trail somewhere. He'd know her trail all right, but it would take months to find her. No, it's no use. But wherever she is, I hope she's safe. As Sergeant Preston and Randy talked about Silvertip, she lay quietly in a cave beside a stream deep in the forest. 
Nuzzling close to her side were five tiny furry shapes, and Silvertip was filled with pride and happiness as she licked them and whimpered to them softly. The following weeks passed swiftly, and Silvertip ranged the forest for food for the hungry mouths of her whelps, who never seemed to have enough. It was on one of these foraging trips that she came across a familiar scent that stopped her in her tracks and brought an eager whine from her throat. It was the scent of Jim Stevens, and Silvertip started to follow it when the thought of her hungry pups held her back. She turned and headed toward her cave. Less than a mile away, Jim sat before a campfire talking to Jules, the French-Canadian trapper who had taken him into partnership. We made a good catch, Jules. This is fine trapping country. Uh, the game this year is not so plentiful as most seasons, but it is not so bad as some seasons I have known. I think we've done very well. We'll have to get these furs back to the trading post before we get too many to carry. Gee, I wish I hadn't hurt my foot yesterday. You need more supplies, too. Well, me, I think I make trip to trading post alone tomorrow. I take big load of fur to trade and bring back supplies for us. You stay here at camp. That's a good idea, Jules, if you don't mind going alone. I can walk all right if I don't go too far, but I'm afraid the trip to town would be too long a distance. You'd better if you stay here and rest. I think I'll go over to the stream and do some fishing tomorrow. This is the last of our fresh meat, and I could use a dinner of fish. <laughs> that good. That keep you from walk too much. By the time you get back, my foot will be better, and then we can make the rounds of our trap line. Jim sat fishing beside the stream, enjoying the warm sunshine that slanted through the trees, when suddenly he heard the sound of a terrific fight between two animals. The, world. the sound came from downstream. Leaving his fishing pole on the bank, Jim hurried toward it as fast as his lame foot would carry him. That sounds like a wolf or a dog. That other sound, it must be a wolverine. I wish I had my gun. As Jim rounded a bend in the stream, his eyes widened with surprise and alarm. Silvertip, before the opening of her cave, was fighting furiously with a large wolverine, the fiercest animal in the forest. Silvertip was no match for it, but wounded and staggering, she held her ground and fought valiantly for her pups inside the cave. Jim picked up a large piece of wood from beside the stream, and in spite of his lame foot, ran to her aid. As he lifted the club to strike the wolverine, the animal turned, and as the club descended, the beast sprang at Jim, ripping his leg open to the bone. Jim's club landed with a skull-crashing blow, but he staggered and fell beside the wounded silver tip as the blood gushed from his leg. Oh, 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 my leg. Silvertip, I found you at last. If I can just drag myself to you, I can help you. Oh, oh. You puppy. That's why we were fighting so hard. You're hurt, old girl. But I killed that wolverine. Everything is getting me black. I'm getting faint, I guess. I'm losing so much blood. I got to stop this bleeding. If I can tear a piece off this shirt... There. Now, if I can tie it around my leg. Oh. 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 I'm so weak. Better make a tourniquet. Oh. There. Everything's starting to get dark again. I. What? I. Oh. Sergeant Preston was returning from his usual patrol north. As he walked his horse along the trail, his big dog, King, ran well ahead of him. Easy, fella. Suddenly, King stopped Easy, as boy. a familiar scent crossed the trail. It was the scent of Silvertip, who early that morning had crossed it in her search for food. As the Mountie approached him, the great dog barked with excitement. What's wrong, King? Oh, oh there. Now listen, King, we have a time to go chasing something in the woods. No hunting today, boy. King, come back here. King tried to tell his master that this wasn't an ordinary scent that he wanted to follow. He ran back into the woods and waited, barking at the Monty, trying to urge him to follow. Well, you're determined, aren't you? All right, I suppose we better find out what's bothering you. Come on. Hope it's worth a rough trip through those woods. All right, King, we're coming. Come on, fella, get up there. 
It was later that Jim Stevens opened his eyes and saw the figure of Sergeant Preston bending over him in the dim light of the cave. He tried to remember where he was. What? What? Sergeant Preston. Don't worry, Jim. You're going to be all right now. Here, drink this water. Oh, thanks. Take some more if you want it. I seem to be awfully thirsty. You lost a lot of blood, that's why. The wolverine clawed me before I killed it. I thought that's what had happened. Here. Drink some more water. Good thing you got that tourniquet on before you fainted. Those claws had almost severed an artery. You must have got here just after I fainted. Yes, I did. And that was lucky, too. You had the tourniquet tied so tightly that there was no blood going into your leg at all. You're not out of danger yet. I'll have to get you to a doctor to save that leg. Well, wait a while till you're rested. Silvertip, is she all right? She was hurt quite seriously, but I think she'll pull through, Jim. You know, it's a fine litter of pups. Sergeant, I... I guess this looks pretty bad for me, doesn't it? Well, what do you mean, Jim? Finding me here with Silvertip, I mean. I suppose you'll believe what Tom said, that I stole her and hid her away like this. No, Jim. In the first place, it wouldn't have been possible unless you penned her up somewhere. This is a place that Silvertip herself would have chosen to have her littered. Well, thanks, Sergeant. I would like to hear how you found her, though. Just by accident. I was fishing and heard the fight. I didn't have a gun, so I grabbed a club. That wolverine was killing her. King must have got the scent of Silvertip on the trail. I followed him here. But if I go back to town with you, it will mean we leave Silvertip here. She's wounded and can't protect herself alone. Well, don't worry about that, Jim. We won't leave her here alone. I'm leaving King here with her. After all, those pups are half his. He ought to take some responsibility. <laughs> She'll be safe with King. I'll come back and get her and the pups after we get you fixed up. Oh, uh, Jim, even though you haven't accused Tom in any way, I think I know who let Silvertip get away. I didn't want to accuse him. I had no proof. But he hated her, all right. Yes, and he hated you. He's very jealous of you, Jim. That's why I can't work for Mr. McNeil, even though I like dogs. I think it would be nice if you went into the dog breeding business yourself, Jim. But I can't. I have no capital. I'd have you, to... You, uh, you have Silvertip, and I'm giving you the pups, all except one. But, but, Sergeant, they're yours, and Silvertip belongs to you. They wouldn't have been here if it hadn't been for you, Jim. This will give you a start in business. Well... I guess we'd better start. I'll carry you to my horse. <laughs> You're staying here with your family, King. We'll be back in a day or so. Silvertip lay quietly in the cave, her puppies curled close to her side. She felt peaceful and secure with the knowledge that the powerful form of King stood on guard outside, between her and danger. The moonlight splashed his shadow across the entrance, and Silvertip closed her eyes contentedly as she heard his long-drawn howl drift across the forest. She knew it was his way of telling his happiness to the moon. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is a George W. Trendle production directed by Fred Flowerday and written by Mildred Merrill. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. When you hear the name Ross Dolan Detective, you can count on it being a clue to fast-moving adventure with one of radio's favorite detectives. Every Saturday night over most ABC stations, Ross Dolan Detective is on hand to solve another mysterious crime case. In the role of Ross, you hear William Gargan, popular star of screen and radio. Here is a characterization that fits Gargan like a glove, for in many of his film performances, he has played the part of a super sleuth. But back to Ross Dolan. He's a detective that talks fast and acts quickly. And when a member of the underworld spies Ross coming his way, he knows trouble's a-brewing. Yes, Dolan has a way with a criminal, a way that leads to justice, for he doesn't pull his punches when it comes to hauling in a fugitive from law and order. Don't miss hearing Ross Dolan Detective when he's on the air tonight.